Welcome back to the Cybermen, guys. This is the Cybermen News, another edition for another week. We have some really interesting and spicy stories today, but I thought we would start with the less exciting uh, being the reveals of the Saiyan expansion set EX17. Uh, we already had an awesome reveal from Joey, but I thought I'd just go over them since we went over the others earlier. So the newer cards are Super Saiyan Bardock, Spirit Resonance, he's a dual attacker, he evolves for three off any Bardock card, one blue. Uh, he has an auto limit two, which means you can only activate that skill twice uh, across all copies of that card for the turn. It's a spirit boost two, remaining you remove two markers from your unison when you activate it. If your opponent has three or more energy and it's your turn when this card attacks or at the end of a battle when this card was used in a combo from your hand, Choose up to one of your mono blue leader cards and switch it to active. It gets 5,000 power for the turn, then negate its keyword skills for the turn, and you can't activate leaders, leader cards' non-keyword skills for the turn. So it's pretty much just giving your leader another attack at 20k, or depending on if you've used a Senzu, even more power for the turn, but you lose any keyword skills and can't activate autos or non-keyword skills. Interesting card. Definitely uh, a lot of fun. I really like the artwork there. Uh, next up, we have Hunt of the Demon God. Very strange that this card is in a Saiyan expansion. I really, really wish that these shroom, bloody, weird-ass characters would just get lost, to be honest. Terrible. But it's a black counter-counter, which is crazy. Uh, if your leader card and energy are all the same color and your opponent has four or more energy, negate the counter-attack skill of an extra card with an original energy cost of one that was activated without paying its energy cost. It's a very interesting uh, cost to pay this. You need to have your opponent on four or more energy, but a generic counter counter that stops things like Dimension Magic, you sparking, uh, it stops freezes, free play on the awakened side uh, of like a Nimbus or other negates. It stops Dormant Potential. Very, very good. I'm really excited to see a counter counter that is generic. Uh, I feel like we've needed things like this. I still want something that kind of stops counterplays for the turn, that would be amazing. Activate main, spirit boost one. You must remove a marker from your unison, of course, as a spirit boost one. It's one energy and you need to have a unison card with a specified cost. So you can't uh, use it on a black unison uh, that doesn't have a specified cost. Remove this card in your drop area from the game. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost greater than their current energy, and until the end of your opponent's next turn, skills are negated and it can't attack. So it's really nice reuse to reuse this from the drop area. I love it. Very, very good. I guess it's just so you can't use the kind of cards that play the black uh, unison cards for free to take advantage of that, which is fair. Uh, the last card is Android 17, Key Channeler, Energy Exhaust Barrier. Uh, if he's got a permanent, if your leader card is blue and you have five or more life, negate this card's energy exhaust skill in all areas. So this guy is better to get in hand earlier, uh, in the game, of course. This is kind of for the starter deck Android uh, 21 card deck. Uh, you tap one blue. If your leader card is a blue Android, you may place this card in its owner's drop area from your energy. If you do play this card from your drop area. So that's really good because with the Android 16, it allows you to replace your energy. Uh, at the end of the turn, and also he has an activate main, place one card from your energy in its owner's drop area, choose up to one of your opponent's unison cards and remove a marker from it. So that just is a really good utility. Uh, I like that um, you can get this out for one and start doing that. The problem is, if you do get this out, you don't really want to be using uh, the second activate main uh, on the same turn because you will lose an energy because your leader card only replaces one energy lost, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. But it's got barrier, so it can just sit there and stop unison cards from getting too out of hand. I really like it. It's a very good utility. All right, our second segment, guys, is on the Oceania regionals that happened last weekend. Congratulations to William Lawson for coming first, taking out the win Finally, with his King Piccolo, uh, he's been trying hard to get there, which is awesome. Um, been really pushing that King Piccolo for a long time, so I guess he's tuned it really well. Uh, also, congratulations to Dylan from the Cybermen. Uh, he took out 12th place with his cooler. 
Uh, second regional in a row that he's got in the top 16 with his cooler deck, which is really cool. I'll put the deck profile in the description for you. It has changed a little bit since, but it really only has the new SCR in it. That's about it. Uh, and now onto the spicy details. We have another uh, interesting kind of happening in this tournament. Um, Zach O'Donoghue, a Australian player, was playing against Michael Kano, who's an American player, well known for uh, being part of the super players. Uh, take that as you will, I won't comment. Um, but he was playing the new King Vegeta with the Vegeta card that when it is removed by skill, your opponent quits a life. Uh, he went in for game with that card, dumped his hand, and Zach O'Donoghue uses Heron Lineage to take it back. Amazing play uh, to take that card. And what happens is, as we all know, and it is common knowledge now since kind of set six green brolly, when an opponent, when you take one of your opponent's cards, you become the master of the card before an order resolves Therefore, you get any of the effects of the auto. So, you know, if you have a card that when it's removed, you draw two, you draw two, the person who, who took control of the card. In this case, when Zach O'Donoghue took the card, Michael Kano was on one life. Uh, so Michael Kano would have to crit that life and lose the game. What happened is Michael Kano doesn't know this ruling. doesn't surprise me because Michael has played in Australian regionals before uh, in the last couple of months and other kind of situations like this have happened, which I'll talk about in a sec. But he argued that Zach should take the life. Zach was also on one life. Uh, and Zach said, no, I'm the owner of the card now. I get the auto. But there was a disagreement there. The judge was called, uh, one of our level two judges, Ryan, was called in to make a call. Uh, now, let me make it clear, Ryan is one of the best judges in Australia. He's a level two judge, uh, you know, very, very good at judging the game and he knows his stuff. So he came in and said, okay, no, Michael, you take the life, so you lose. Uh, Michael said, I disagree. He asked to call a head judge. Gary Baker comes in. Gary is an amazing bloke. He's extremely knowledgeable at the game. Uh, he's, in my opinion, uh, along with Ryan, one of the best judges in the world of Dragon Ball. And he came in and confirmed that, yes, Michael, you take the life. Michael was not happy about this. Uh, Mr. Kano flipped out, called the judges fucking assholes, uh, and then signed out of Discord, dropping from the tournament. Um, really salty that he lost that game. I believe they were both undefeated at the time. Uh, I mean, a few takeaways from that. You really need to read the rules. Uh, I feel like if you're playing a game, if you're playing, you know, a video game, you need to learn how to play the game before you go and try and play online or whatever. Granted, they're simpler than this card game, but it should be no different with this. You're playing a card game, you should know the rules. You should understand the way things work. Uh, I've said it before, read the fucking cards, RTFC. I'll put the link in the description for my last video on that subject. Just seriously, it's not hard. And another thing, we're all people here. We're all playing, the judges are volunteering their time when they could be playing in this tournament. These guys do play the card game. They're volunteering their time to be helping us out and judging these. Don't call them fucking assholes. Don't be aggressive. If you disagree with a ruling, Escalate it, sure. If the head judge disagrees with you, just leave it. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. Signing out, having a hissy fit is only gonna uh, kind of hurt you in the end. As you can see, some awesome memes have come out of this. I'll just put a little slideshow of the memes here. Really love it. I don't know if a lot of international players would have seen this because it's all in the Australian groups, but thanks to all the Aussie artists, meme artists who brought these out, I had a good chuckle, so enjoy.
At a previous TAC Games tournament, Oceania Regional Online, Michael Kano was also playing, and he was visibly misleading uh, his opponent. He was playing against Android 18. Uh, surprise, surprise, uh, apparently Android 18 is trash, according to some people that I won't mention. But, you know, in the top, they were both undefeated, and Michael Kano somehow misplaced a lot of his tokens, meaning he only had four tokens on board after a multitude of turns, um, and then proceeded to count them incorrectly and try and mislead his opponent about how many tokens he had on board to avoid being milled out. Luckily, he still lost that game. Uh, there was no kind of repercussions there, but it's just a recurring thing here. Feel free to reach out to me, Michael, if you have a problem. I'm just stating facts. Uh, but on to the next story, guys. Alrighty, our second last story today is PPG and Peter Katani. So a lot of you have probably seen on the groups that Peter Katani was banned uh, from PPG tournaments. Uh, that is true. Now, what happened is Peter Katani was working for PPG and he was treated or mistreated uh, and he wasn't given certain things he should have been given. I'm not going to go into detail, uh, but it's unfortunate that we have to deal with stuff like this. Peter Katani is a face of the game. Uh, whether you like him or not, he's an institution of Dragon Ball. He's a funny guy. He's a nice guy. Uh, and he's only brought love and kind of spread the word about this game the whole time. Uh, when I first started, I remember Peter was one of the first kind of people where I was like, wow, this guy's funny as. So sorry about, sorry to hear about that, Peter. Uh, I hope you guys get it sorted out. There's a lawsuit going on. It's all crazy. But, you know, Peter, come and play in the Australian tournaments, mate. We'd love to have you. And finally, breaking news just in. I don't have all the details, but Cell Surge has won another regional, Core TCG Regionals North America. I believe it was a foreign player from maybe Europe, but I don't have the details on that. I apologize. Uh, Brian Samuel taking the L in the final. He was playing King Cold. Really cool to see King Cold up there, though. Uh, cell Surge, just too strong. Hand Destruction was insane. Thanks for watching the Cybermen News, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back soon with more content and another episode of the Cybermen News next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as always. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting, guys. If you want to help support further, jump in the link in the description below to palmsoffgaming.com.au. Look for your grading needs, for your folders, for your binders, and put the code CYBERMAN in, in the checkout. It helps me out. It helps you out. You'll get 10% off. Really, really awesome. Thanks for watching again, guys, and enjoy.